Hi, and welcome to this presentation. My name is Rickard Karlsson, and I'm the author of this paper together with Lawrence Blick, Siko Verve, and Matthias Dubert. We come from Delft University of Technology, and we have written this paper named Continuous Circuit-Based Optimization Algorithms Are Well-Suited for Expensive Discrete Problems. And the main motivation behind this paper is that uh, literature often consider uh, continuous circuit-based algorithms to be suboptimal uh, when applied to discrete problems uh, due to the fact that they ignore the discrete structure. And however, in this presentation and in the paper, we argue that this is not necessarily true. And I'll show you here some, some empirical evidence for why perhaps continuous algorithms deserve more attention when applied to discrete problems. Uh, but let's jump straight into it and see what problem we face. So we're looking here at a discrete black box optimization problem where we have some discrete input x, some black box uh, objective function f, and some output y where we have added uh, additive noise to it. And the task here is to solve the object uh, or to minimize the objective function f, uh, considering some constraints on x where we have where it's upper and lower bounded. And so we're making some assumptions here. I've already talked about the black box assumption and the fact that x is discrete. But we have another very important assumption, which is that the uh, objective function is expensive to evaluate. And this means that we can't really, it's not really optimal to use methods that require many functions evaluations to solve this, uh, this problem. So what can we do instead? Well, we could use a surrogate model. And what it does is that the surrogate model approximates the objective function by learning from observing the input and output, basically the evaluations of this function. And the main idea here is that the surrogate model is cheaper to evaluate. So let's try to solve another problem, which is to minimize the surrogate model. And so here I'll just briefly show you the procedure for surrogate-based optimization. So there are three main uh, or key steps I want to show you here, uh, which are performed iteratively. And the first step is that we evaluate the function and get some output. What we then do is that we have our surrogate model and we fit that to this observed evaluation, but also any previous uh, observed evaluations. And what we do next is that we use this surrogate model together with an acquisition function to propose a new point to evaluate on. And in this way, the surrogate model is used to guide the search for, a, for the optimal solution. So this is what circuit-based optimization is. And now I'll talk a bit about the strategies that we can use to apply a circuit-based algorithm to discrete problems. So the first strategy is to simply use a continuous circuit model and ignore the discrete structure. And this is also known as the naive approach. And one way of doing it is, is to simply round off any real-valued uh, inputs to the Bayesian optimization into discrete values. So one algorithm that does can do this is Bayesian optimization with Gaussian processes as the circuit. Uh, the second strategy is to use a circuit model which is built for discrete problems. So we have, for example, three base models as, as can be found in Hyperopt or SMAC. And these are two uh, well-known algorithms uh, within this, uh, for, this, for these problems. And they are, for example, typically used for hyperparameter tuning. And another algorithm here, which is built for discrete problems is the IDON. Uh, but IDON actually has a continuous uh, circuit model, which is in this case, is a piecewise linear model. But what makes it so special is that it's actually guaranteed to return an inter integer solution when minimized. So in that sense, it's, it's built for discrete problems. And so these are four algorithms I've talked about here, and these are the ones that we're going to compare now later in the presentation when I show you the experiments. Uh, but I think we are ready now to just see the main results here from the paper. And so what we'll show you is that continuous circuits actually show competitive performance on discrete problems. And in fact, this naive approach that I mentioned now earlier with Bayesian optimization actually works uh, really well, and particularly on discrete ordinal and binary structures in problems. So, right, so this is the main results. But now let's jump into the experiments. So, let me just quickly uh, explain the experimental setup here. So, 
basically, what we're having is a pretty strict evaluation budget of, of up to 500 evaluation. And this is because, remember, the, uh, the, we assume that the objective function is uh, expensive to evaluate. So we want this to be a realistic benchmark in that sense. And the other thing is that we're also testing this on re relatively large dimensionalities and also on different structures uh, such as the ordinal structure, which is the first one I'm showing you here. I'll show you the, later one, the other ones later on. And here we have two problems. We have the discrete Rosenblatt, which is a synthetic problem, and the electrostatic precipitator uh, problem, which is an, a real-life industrial optimization problem. And the figure shows you the average objective function up into a certain iteration. And in both of these figures here, we see that the black line, which comes from Bayesian optimization, is actually performing the best. So already we see that a continuous circuit is beating the other discrete circuits, but also idle. And to get a, perhaps an intuition for why uh, Bayesian optimization is doing so well, is that we could visualize the circuits here. So we are here showing the ground truth for the discrete Rosenbrock, but we are also showing you the circuits uh, as visualized for the idon and Bayesian optimization. And we can see here that Idon looks pretty rugged and not really that similar to the ground truth, while Bayesian optimization actually looks pretty good. It's, it's smooth and it's, uh, uh, it resembles the ground truth pretty well. So based on these papers, we could suspect why Bayesian optimization is performing so well, since it actually it's, it does a pretty good job in approximating the, this black box objective function. And so from this, we might conclude that uh, Bayesian optimization works pretty well for ordinal structures. The second structure that we're looking at is a binary structure, and this is the case is the weighted max cut graph problem. And here, once again, we can actually see that Bayesian optimization is uh, is performing the best among the algorithms, but second best is the IDON. So here we actually see that the both of the continuous circuits are performing better than the discrete circuits on this uh, binary problem. And actually, we don't really know why. And in the paper, we discuss this more, but one important thing to know is that actually Bayesian optimization doesn't necessarily work better with binary variables, but it's still performing the best. And so this is actually something, a question which remains to be answered. The third structure which we looked at was the sequential structure. And here we have the traveling salesman problem, where we want to find a sequence of cities uh, to find uh, and optimize the shortest traveling distance between these cities. And this is the only problem that I will show you here that where a Bayesian optimization is not performing the best, but instead we have this other continuous model, uh, the IDON, which is performing the best. So in all the problems I've shown you here, we have actually seen that the continuous circuit is performing better than the discrete uh, circuits. So these were the experiments I want to show you, but uh, I would also like to mention another experiment that we did, uh, namely where we took the computation time into consideration. Uh, but, but because although we don't show it here, with the Bayesian optimization has a much larger computation time compared to the other algorithms. Uh, and thus, it seems relevant to actually take the computation time into consideration and see what happens perhaps if we restrict the uh, time budget instead of restricting um, the number of elevations. And so what we see here is that we are actually varying the evaluation time uh, of the objective function, but also giving each algorithm a given time budget. And so each square in this figure is uh, the best performing algorithm uh, given a certain time budget and evaluation time. And so what we see here is that these results are more mixed. There's no clear winner in that sense, but we can actually see that the continuous circuits do perform well under certain, uh, with certain constraints. And so the point here is that continuous circuits models are still performing well, even though we take the uh, computation time into consideration. So, these were the experiments that I want to show you here. You're welcome to read the paper if you would like to know more about them, but I would like to quickly summarize what I've talked about. So what I've shown you here is that continuous circuits applied to this black, discrete black box optimization problems actually show a pretty competitive performance. And especially this naive approach with Bayesian optimization showed to outperform the discrete circuits on several benchmarks. Uh, and so the point here that I'm trying to make is that perhaps that continuous circuits uh, that apply to these discrete problems should get more attention in this field of research. And that's also how I would like to 
conclude this presentation. So I would like to say you thank you for listening.